Hey everybody, it's Carrie, and welcome back to a, another video. So today's video is gonna be different than the videos that I typically do if you did not read the title for this video. I thought that it would be a great video to do with spring coming around and markets kind of starting to pick back up again. I know for a lot of people, markets typically kind of dwindle off January, February, and then start to pick back up in March. And with my first market coming up in March as well, I am already having to go through all my stuff again, figure out what new things I need for this market season. Cause I feel like there's always something I have to get. And the first market is always the worst because then I realize how unprepared I am, especially with not doing a ton of markets beforehand. But for today's video, I wanted to go over some of my essentials and also provide links and whatnot to what I have purchased for my own market setup. The thing with market setups is you can either go super expensive or you can go super cheap. When I was looking into doing my really large market last year, I wanted to go with some of the bigger brands for certain setups. In particular, I was really interested in a lot of the vertical ledge setups just because I had seen so many YouTubers who used a lot of their products for their setups. But then when I was looking at it, I was like, do I really want to spend a couple hundred dollars on these tiered platforms? I think is what I was looking at and some of the other things. And ultimately I decided I really wasn't comfortable with doing that. And then there were other factors that I think anybody should think about when they're going into markets. Number one thing that I always say is space. <laughs> a lot of times when you do markets, you're either going to get a 10 by 10 spot or a 12 by 12 spot. Typically most of the markets I do were 10 by 10. A lot of times, you'll either have markets that you can actually pull up to your spot, unload, and then you have to leave. My market last year, I was allowed to pull up in my spot, but I was in a really narrow street and there were people all down the way with me. The other side of the street, there were tons of people too. So basically you had assigned times, you drove up through another narrow street to get there that also had lots of people trying to like unpack and everything. I threw all of my stuff out on the ground <laughs> in the street, tried to get it away and then had to drive off and then of course come back and set things up. I think being very aware of the space you have is so important for markets. So when I was looking at getting some of my products and whatnot, for my setup, I try really hard to factor that in so some of the things I got opposed to getting like the vertical ledge stuff that I was really interested in, I went with options that were a lot more collapsible, not as heavy, just all of those good things to make my life easier, to make setup easier, to make lugging things around easier. Last year, I didn't go out of my way to purchase like a wagon per se, just because I really didn't feel like I had necessarily the need at the time. Going into this year, we're gonna see how it goes just because I am doing a lot more larger events opposed to last year, I got very lucky in the regard that a good deal. The farmer's markets I did, I was able to pretty much park my car fairly close to my spot or set up my tent right next to my car. Getting like a wagon or anything was not really a priority of mine, but that might change this year with how much I'm having to walk around and whatnot. So a vast majority of the places that I go and look at for setup stuff is Michael's just because I always go to Michael's and I get small little things from there not like big pieces or anything. Walmart and Amazon is where I got a lot of my stuff. I come across as such a personal person on camera and I am outgoing, but I have the world's smallest social battery whatsoever. I think like 10 minutes out in public with a ton of people around me is all I ever need in my life. Like after that, I don't wanna be out in public. So a lot of times Amazon is my best friend. One of the most important things that I think you can get for your market setup is easily by far tent. Some events I go to offer the option of renting a tent. There's actually one market I'm looking at doing this year that they actually provide a tent and you don't have to provide one at all or chairs. I'm interested to see how that works out. I assume I'm gonna have a pretty hefty fee on top of my application for using their stuff, but they don't give you an option not to use it. But a vast majority of markets, you typically have to provide your own tent. 
When I first started out, I think I just went to like a sports place near me because I needed a tent and it was like three days till the market. I honestly didn't know if I was going to be doing any more markets at the time I was doing my polymer clay jewelry. So it was just kind of like a test the water type of thing. I didn't want to commit to buying anything expensive. So I just got like a $70 tent. I think it was on sale. It had a blue cover on it just because I had no idea anything about these rules of like if you go to like legit markets, everything has to be white. I was just desperate to get a tent. <laughs> and that tent served me well for a while. And I'll actually say, I think the cheap quality really made it easy for me to set up the tent by myself. Cause I could pop up that thing like totally by myself. No problem. I didn't need any help. It was great. When it came time to do my larger markets, then I realized, okay, I have to actually get a legit Tent. And I was having problems finding one in store that was kind of legit. And I did some research online and ended up finding this one. And I got this one from Amazon and it's not the cheapest tent in the world for sure, but it comes with a lot of stuff. I personally not used a good deal of the stuff just because the last market I did, the weather was fine. It was like a little bit windy, but it wasn't rainy. And I like to keep my space really open just so that way people can constantly see my setup and my table and not just like white borders. The tent that I bought was, I'm going to spell the name, E-U-R-M-A-X USA 10 by 10 pop-up canopy commercial tent. And this one in particular comes with four removable zippable sidewalls, a roller bag, which I never used. It also had like an awning and I think it was fire safe. I've never actually gone to a market where they've asked about that, but I have seen that some markets will ask about it. Saw that quite a few people use it. And after having this tent, it's sturdy. <laughs> It's not the cheapest, it's $258, but I had like Prime or whatever, so I got free shipping on it, so I was like, okay. It's a very sturdy tent. It's not at all easy to put up by yourself, so if you're gonna get this tent, I definitely recommend having some help to push it up because it is hard to get it stretched out, but then once you get it like popped out and everything, the actual extending the height is super easy with one person. It's just like getting it up. I was spoiled with my first tent because it was so cheap and it was like boop, 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 so easy. But this is the tent that I use in my setups and I've had no issues with it. Of course, if you're gonna be doing markets and having a tent, you also need to look at tent weights. I think that I got my tent weights from like Walmart and they were just some cheap ones or something because I could not find sandbags at any store. So if you are doing markets, don't wait to look at like Walmart or something to try and find tent weights because there's really not much out there. I ended up having to buy like multiple packs of this one tent weight and then just like stacking it upon each other. And it was really interesting because the market that I did last year required tent weights, but a lot of people did not have tent weights. I was surprised because it was a really windy day and everyone else's tents were like blown away that didn't have tent weights. I was good, but I ended up just getting cheap ones. It's definitely on my plan this year to buy a little bit nicer ones, but these do totally fine and have no issues. For my tables and everything, I have two six foot tables and then one four foot table. Table setup is something that I'm definitely gonna be playing around with this year, just because it's a little difficult with space and whatnot and just trying to figure out the best way when you have other tents right next to you. I had those three tables. As for table coverings, when I first started out with markets, I ended up just getting like your classic normal like table cover that you would see on a dining table, which was fine. But as I did more markets, then if it was like a windy day or something, then the table cover would move a ton and then things would get knocked over. It was hard to get them super uniformed and super form fitting. So I ended up going on Amazon as well and just buying some stretch spandex tables. I got the obstal ones. One of them came in two packs. I wanna say the four foot one did. And then the other one was six foot. They aren't that expensive at all. I will say like the quality isn't gonna be anything crazy. I don't know if they're gonna last a really long time. They've gone through a few markets. One of them I'm like, a mm, little questionable, but they were cheap and they did the job. I wanna say the six foot one was about like $9 or $10 on Amazon. And then the two pack for the four foot ones, it's more expensive, of course. Is that too? That was about like $20. Opposed to using the vertical ledge stuff that I so badly wanted to use, I ended up finding a decent substitute at Walmart. It's not as nice, but I ended up getting some like collapsible, like 
almost spice racks, I think is what they considered them. I actually don't have the box anymore. They did the job because they folded up so nicely when they were done, they were white. I was able to stack, I think like I had my turtles on some of them. I had some small items like whales and stuff, anything that needed to be elevated. And they were pretty sturdy. I still have them tucked away like in my car for this upcoming market, but they were so much more affordable compared to buying like nice expensive wood and I was so happy to not spend the couple hundred dollars and just get something that was like $20, so much cheaper. So if you are looking for like the wire foldable stuff that's collapsible to give your table set up a little bit more height, definitely check out Walmart. Like I said, I wanna say it was possibly a spice rack. If not, then it was definitely in the kitchen section because I was kind of like, in that area. One of the things I use and a lot of people I think also use for their setup is just your standard like wooden crate. You can get them anywhere from like Michael's, Joann's, Walmart. I actually think when I was buying mine, I think I got them up. Joann because they were having like a sale. So I spent like $9 per one and I got about six. The good thing about them is they are great in terms of the standing items. I use the wooden crates a lot because I would lean like a standing item against it or maybe put like standing items inside of it and then also stack some plushies on top of it to just kind of use every space that it gave me. But a lot of my items as you have maybe seen are standing. That can be one of the biggest challenges about crocheting so many standing items opposed to sitting is it is a lot harder to display them opposed to sitting because they just don't <laughs> half of them don't want to stand half the time and if there's the tiniest slightest breeze they definitely are not going to stand so the wooden crates were great i used a lot of them and like i said i would like put the standing ones leaning against i put them inside but you can pretty much find them anywhere from like walmart michael's joann's i think they're fairly common. I just did mine the standard wood. I've seen some people who will like spray paint them or paint them. For me, I just kind of like to go for a very natural look. So that's what I ended up doing. The last kind of display item that I would recommend for people would be more in the terms of branding. I got super lucky and found someone who could basically make what I wanted. And you can find them on Instagram at sign sites. So it's spelled S-I-G-N-S-I-G-H-T-S. -S. If you're ever looking for a logo or whatnot, they're super affordable, super easy to figure things out with. I highly, highly, highly recommend them. They helped me a ton in terms of just getting kind of a brand and a logo. The logo I was using before was actually a logo I had made for the Traveling Pony podcast and blog that I had been hosting up to the point before I got really big into like markets and everything. So I had made it, but I kind of going into my first big market was pretty much set that like I wanted to have a brand identity and I think that's a really big deal if you're looking at doing markets is like have an established brand, have a look, all of those type things. So before my market, I took a leap of faith, <laughs> spent some money, got my logo and everything done and then spent money to get like a sign or whatnot. It's totally slipping my head what to call it, but like a sign to hang up and then also to get like brand new business cards and all this other type of stuff. That way, if somebody saw my logo somewhere, they would know who I am and also my logo in particular gets people talking. So it's also been great because people are like, oh, why do you have this name? And I'm like, oh, let me tell you. So I actually have here two things that I include with every single purchase that happens. So this is my business card. So when I got this business card made, I was pretty much, and you won't see it on this one, I wanted to have my horses. So this one right here is my horse Sloan, which is the one that you guys will see if I'm ever like riding or whatnot. And then this horse over here is Freya. And I wanted to have their nose touching and everything and then like a little heart and you won't see it on this side, but I'll flip it over. This is the back side and whatnot. And down here is a little ball of like yarn and then a horseshoe has my QR code that leads to my link tree that has my website, all that fun stuff. Also has my Instagram and website on the back here 
just in case someone needs it. This is something that I don't always see people include, but I can definitely say after the markets I've done, I've had a lot of people who are thankful for it. <laughs> they always are like, oh my God, that's so smart for you to do. Like I would have totally been stumped. So I have this right here and this is another thank you card, except this one in particular has basically all of the instructions that somebody would need to care for the item. I can't tell you how many people have asked me like, can they just throw it in the washing machine or can they throw it in a dryer? Like had some people who will like give their stuffies to like dogs and then they get shredded and then they come back up to me and they're like, it got shredded, can you fix it? I'm like, why did you give it to the dog? <laughs> so I ended up making this so that way people could have a very easy thing. Every single purchase I get, they get this. It makes life easier. But as you can tell, even on this one, it has my branding and everything is just really uniformed. My colors here are kind of like a cool blue, gray, navy, which is similar to my barn colors. And that's the color that I tend to carry over even with my setup. Tying into the whole having like a brand type logo type situation. I have a plushy catalog. I actually need to update this and add a lot more pages. If you've seen some of my early videos, you maybe have seen this before. I really need to update the cover photo because this was like a month into crocheting. I got this printed at CVS. If you're gonna get pictures printed, print them out like Walmart or something because CVS was horrible. But this was pretty much everything that I had crocheted within a month. And I threw it on a thing. I was like, oh, this is gonna be my plushy catalog. It sits at my table and I can't tell you how many people I've had flip through this catalog and then ask me about customs and then get a custom made. Or we'll look at the catalog and I'm like, hey, I don't have this item with me today. It's in the catalog, you can purchase it. It has garnered more sales than I would have ever thought and it's so easy to do. So you'll see like my plushie catalog. I just take pictures of crochet items. So the front side is like some of the cows I've done and all of that. And then you just keep flipping and I try and uniform everything like flower bouquets. Uh, another flat I've got, <laughs> I got to put all my new flower bouquets. Dinosaurs, more dinosaurs, elephants. Uh, that's elephants. This was one of the old ones. I was gonna make little special things for each one. So that didn't happen. Unicorns. Oh. Here's some like baby stuff that I've done. Uh, another baby, mermaids, shark, bees, cat, capybara, bunnies, fox. Um, we're missing a page. Some other like little fun things. Now we're getting into like Christmas. Christmas, and then that's the end of it. So I have a lot to add to this because I have made just so many crazy things between like Christmas orders and then just general market items that I have made and also update pictures because some of these pictures are literally within like two weeks of me crocheting. Like my little adorable fox had the color changes not really great on the ears because I didn't understand how to color change at the time. So like certain things like that just need to be updated. But I definitely would recommend possibly doing something like this for your market setup. Know the world revolves around social media, but at the same time, the difference is, is when somebody comes up to my tent, it's so easy for me to pitch something with a book that's like right there, has the products. If they ask a price, I can say, hey, this is what the price is because I pretty much know all the prices off the top of my head. If they want it, they can pay me right there or they can go on my website. Sometimes I think the best thing you can do when you're at markets is have the easiest way to make a sale and to not have to send somebody to your Instagram. I don't have the best memory. So if I'm somewhere and someone is like, oh yeah, I've made that before. You need to go look on my Instagram or something to see it. I can guarantee you I will never do that because my brain's already gone. <laughs> Those are some of my like little bit essentials where I bought things before, all the fun stuff. I wish I had a lot more stuff that I could show you guys, but honestly, I try and keep my setup pretty low key and focus more on the plushy aspect <laughs> because I think that's like the most important thing. Hope to maybe one day have a nicer setup, but not right now. I have no desire to spend tons of money trying to upgrade it. And I am just a firm believer in just like letting my products speak for themselves and kind of do what they need to do. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. 
and I hope everyone has a great start to the market season if you're doing market. If not, and you're maybe looking at possibly doing markets in the future, I hope this video was beneficial to you. And of course, we'll be having market recaps coming back now that market season started. If you guys are ever interested in my other market recaps, you can scroll back to like November, October on this channel. Just know I was just starting out. I didn't have a nice camera. Like give me a bit of the doubt, <laughs> but we'll definitely be having market recaps and all that fun stuff as we get closer. Hope you guys have an amazing day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.